Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sewing up Moda Blockheads 5, block number 5 and 6. I'm playing a little bit of catch up from being out of town for a week and for those of you blockheads who sent me a message and said, hey, are you still doing these? I am. Thank you so much for your message. I really appreciate that. It makes me feel good that you're looking for my video. Um, but I was out of town for a week and so I'm just a little bit behind, you know, kids, house, job, <laughs> things get backed up, but today is the day I'm catching up. So today I'm going to work on two blocks. I'm going to work on block five and block six. So then next week when block seven comes out, I'll be all cut up and ready to go and I'll be able to put my video out on Wednesday and you guys can sew along with me again. Now a lot of you have probably already done these blocks, but hopefully you'll kind of pop over anyway and take a peek at what I did. I am changing uh, both of them just slightly. Um, one I'm just using their alternative directions and the other one I'm kind of doing my own directions. So I'm going to show you what I did and give you a few tips along the way. All right, guys, let's get sewing. So this is Blockheads 5, group one, block number five, the Southern Star. So I decided when I was looking at the diagram that I prefer it with the alternative instructions, which are on the paper. Um, the uh, main instructions have you using a background square and attaching two of these squares to either end um, and then the alternative has a solid center. I'm doing this red center. I prefer the way that looks. So that's the way I chose. And so that changes your cutting instructions just a little bit. And I'm doing the 12 inch finished blocks, which means they'll end up 12 and a half inches right now and 12 inches when they're in the quilt. So um, that's my centerpiece right there. So if you are doing it by the instructions with the white piece in the center, you would have or the background your background would be in the center and then you would have to add whatever your accent color is to make the star so mine would be red so i would have had to add a red to this square and a red to this square but i'm not doing it that way i decided i wanted my red star in the center to be really prominent so i did the alternative like i said and i'm doing this as the center so now i'm going to set this aside for now the only thing i have to do now is i need to make four of each of these two blocks. This is my accent color. So I need to add these two and a half inch squares to either end or opposite ends of each four of each of these. And then you're also going to make, if you're doing it the way I am with the solid center, four of each of these guys. Now, if you're doing it the opposite, the other way, like I said, you'll have to have another background square and then two of the colors that make up your star so i would have had to have two red but i'm not doing it that way so four of these guys and four of these guys so i'm going to go ahead and do that now now this is called snowballing the corners of your block or you're just adding two and a half inch squares to the opposite corners and they don't overlap so you can go ahead and sew both sides at the same time or you can do all of them on all four at the same time kind of chain piece them and then go back and do the other sides, whichever you like. So how did you guys do with that FPP uh, star that we did last time? I thought that was a lot of fun. I know that a lot of you um, had wrote comments and said that you were a little bit afraid to do it. But then you decided to take the plunge and you enjoyed it. I'm glad to hear that. FPP can be a lot of fun. It can be intimidating at first, but if you just let yourself enjoy the process, sometimes you might find something that you like. And if you don't like it, that's okay too, because not every technique is for everyone. I'll be the first person grumbling when they have an applique block. <laughs> I love the way applique looks. It's just not something that gives me a lot of joy to make. And so I'm sure there's one coming eventually. So I will be grumbling that week, but that's okay. I will get through it with you guys because I made you do the FPP. Why did it make you, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the thing I like about FPP is that once you learn how to do it, your pieces come out really precisely, which is really fun. Okay. 
Now this block isn't difficult, just make sure that you pay really close attention to the assembly instructions because you're going to want to make sure you turn the correct colors in the correct way to get that star in the center. I'm just going to trim these a quarter inch away from the line. You can use your rotary cutter or your scissors. Sometimes when I'm a camera, it's just easier to scissor cut them really quickly. But if you're doing a whole bunch, you can get your rotary cutter and your ruler out. That'll work really well. Okay, so now I'm just going to press both of these out like that, that one out like that. And you should have four of this style with the two different colors and four of the ones with the similar, the same colors, whichever colors you decided to pick. I really like this star because I feel like it's not just Christmassy. Not that, not that stars are Christmassy, but I don't know. This one feels like it could be for lots of other things as well. I could really see doing this for our, our non Christmas celebrating friends, like, um, Jewish friends doing this in like blue and silver. I think that would look really, really, really pretty. I know this isn't a Christmas sew along either. I just, I'm thinking of it as a Christmas sew along because I'm using Christmas fabric, but I know that most of you aren't. So I don't know why I'm thinking of it that way, but yeah. Anyhow. Okay. So I have those done. I'm going to set my scissors aside and then I'm going to lay out this block. So I need that piece to go like that. I'm just looking at the layout in the block. So here's red ones and I need another one of these guys. So all of these, when you sew them together, you're gonna always have the white touching the colored fabric, right? This is gonna be my center. Then this is where it gets tricky to make sure I put the star pieces in the right place. And then let's see, that one's going to go there. And then I already did one row right here, which mimics the top row. It's just turned the opposite way. So the top and the bottom row are the same. I'm just going to turn it around. You guys won't be able to see that because it's off camera a little bit. Let me see if I can move this up a little bit. Now I messed up all my pieces. <laughs> That's okay. All right. You can kind of start to see a little bit of the star coming together in the center. That's why I liked that strong color right in the middle. Because you see more, I feel like you can see the star a little bit better. But that's just my opinion. And if you guys like it with the white in the middle with the pieces on the end, that works perfectly fine too. So you would have a piece like this in the middle except a red here. Which actually, now that I see that, it's pretty cute. I think either way would be fine. Okay, so I've already got that row sewn together. I'm going to sew this row, and then I'm going to sew this row. This is a pretty quick sewing block, which is nice. Because I've already taken a look at next week's block, or this block six, and that one looks a little bit more complicated. I'm just finger pressing it in the way I want it to go and then I'm going to add my pressing solution there to the seam and we'll come back and press that in a minute after I do this one 
I press this bottom row and I'm going to do the same with the top row out. So this one in the middle, I'm pressing towards the center square. So that way when I put the rows together, they'll nest up really nicely. So is it starting to look like fall by you guys? It definitely is here in Ohio. It's been chilly, very much so at nighttime, and kind of that rainy, cooler fall weather, which I actually love. Not so much the rain, but I love the cooler weather. I was out of town at a quilting retreat in Las Vegas for So Yeah Quilting and had a great time, but it had already been sweater weather here in Ohio. And I went out there and a couple of days it was in the mid 90s. So it was a little hot out there for me. So I was happy to get back home to my weather. But I'm just wondering for you guys at home if you're starting to get fall like weather as well. Okay, so now I'm just going to give these a press. We've got some apples that we picked at the orchard that I still need to do some stuff with. I did some things already. Need to make a few more things and freeze them. And we got our pumpkins on our front step. We are a family of six and we have six pumpkins on our front step. And it's kind of funny when you look at it, it looks a little bit excessive, but if you knew who was in the household, <laughs> you would understand. But we got all different sizes and shapes and colors. You guys know that my favorite color is blue and I found a blue pumpkin this year and I was super excited about that. I have a friend from Australia, Philippa. She was telling me about blue pumpkins and then lo and behold, I went to the pumpkin patch and this year there was a blue pumpkin. So I got a blue pumpkin. I'm super excited. So we got some traditional pumpkins. One of my kids picked out like a black and orange pumpkin. <laughs> my daughter picked out a white pumpkin. So it's not just a porch full of orange pumpkins, which is kind of fun. I love that we have all different colors. And I think they did a really good job. I feel like their pumpkins really kind of match their personalities, the ones they picked out. So <laughs> my son picked a basic orange pumpkin and that's kind of his personality. He's, he's, um, super smart, but more of a shy child and more of a go by the rules kind of kid. So it doesn't surprise me that he picked a traditional orange pumpkin. My little boys picked out pumpkins that were just really odd shapes, which is, I think pretty, you know, something that little boys would do. <laughs> Okay, last row. And then, like I said, my daughter picked out a white one. I got a blue. And my husband got a black and orange pumpkin. So, my husband always, he likes traditional, but then he likes to also kind of um, do his own thing. So, the fact that he picked the orange and black doesn't surprise me at all. Spice it up a little bit. And I don't know what they're called, but we found some gourds too that it was green and had stripes on it and sort of looked like a starfish. So we ended up coming home with that because all of us here in this house love anything to do with the ocean. And so the fact that it looked like a starfish, we were like, oh, we have to have that. So if any of you know what the gourd that looks like a starfish is, tell me down below in the comments. Okay, so there's that block completely done. Oh, it's so pretty and it went together really fast. That was a super fast block. So I'm going to go ahead and press this, hang it on my wall behind me, and then we'll go on to block number six. Okay, this is Moda Block Heads 5. I can almost speak. <laughs> Group 1, block 6. This is the Celeste Star by Lori Simpson of Minnick and Simpson. 
Um, I forgot to mention, I guess, who that last block was by. So sorry about that. I can't remember now. Actually, I already tossed the directions. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the center of this block. So this is what the block looks like right here. So the center is basically a square and a square. So I've already attached two of the sides to my square and a square. And I'm using one, two, three, four different print fabrics and a background fabric in this block. So my block might look a little different than yours depending on how many fabrics you chose. So I already attached two of the sides and now I need to attach the other two. And I am using a directional print, but I cut it in a way that when I put this block or put this the right way, the words are gonna be going the correct direction because I cannot have a directional go the wrong direction. <laughs> That's my OCD. So my first tip when you do a square and a square is you find the center, and I can actually cut these little dog ears off. Let me grab my scissors. Just gonna snip those right off, just so they're out of the way and not confusing. Forgot to do that earlier. Put those away. The first thing you I do when I make a square to square, now you, can, you don't have to do it this way, you can do it whatever way you want is I try to find the center of the square and I just finger press the very end of it. It just helps me with lining up my pieces more precisely. So now those two are scored a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do with these end pieces that I'm gonna stick on here is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and find the center of those triangles but I'm gonna make sure, since the right sides of the fabric are gonna to go together, that I'm gonna to bend that so that little bend fits right inside that little score mark that I already made. And then now we have the center of each of those pieces. So it makes it a little bit easier to line up. And it sort of lays in that ditch that I made really nicely. And I'm also gonna pin it right there. I'm not a pinner, but I do pin in this case, just to keep them from moving because we are cutting some triangles here that are on the bias, and so we don't want to stretch them or anything like that. So I like to pin these in place just to make sure they don't move. So let me grab some pins here. There's one, and let me grab a second one. And I like these really thin, long pins because then I know the head won't be in the way when I go through the sewing machine. And I know this is a controversial issue, <laughs> but yes, I do sew over pins. I have a semi-industrial machine and it can handle it as long as I go slow. Now, do I recommend that to everybody? No, that's just a personal choice that I make. Um, but just, uh, just warning you, cause I don't want the quilting police coming after me because I sew over pins, but I get these really super long ones. So I won't hit this head with the foot of my machine. Cause that's when I might have a problem. My machine is built to go through like eight layers of leather at a time. So it can handle these super fine pins. So I just have those laying in the ditch right there where I pressed it, finger pressed it. Now I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch on either side and that puts those right in the middle. So this is the method I like. If I'm not doing a paper piece square and a square, if I'm just doing this kind, I like to finger press mine there. I feel like I get a much more precise square and a square. Now I'm gonna go slow over that pin. Cleared the needle and knock on wood, I have never broken a needle yet going over a pin. I have bent a few pins, but I've never broken a needle, so. But I wouldn't try this on, I have another machine that's not a semi-industrial machine and I definitely wouldn't put pins through that one. So it also depends on your machine and if you're comfortable with it. Okay, good. I'm gonna pull those out 
and I can tell already that those did not move so that's really nice and then I'm just going to press these out and we're going to trim this down to the size stated in the pattern which I believe is four and a half inches square but I will have to take a peek okay oh it's going to be pretty I love it okay let me give this a press right here Or six and a half. I'm sorry. Yeah, it wasn't four and a half. It's six and a half. I think the centers, um, most of the other blocks are four and a half. So I was thinking four and a half, like down to trimming them down. The size that we cut were four and a half. So your center square should be six and a half. Now, if you are afraid of square and a square, because I know some people are like, oh, mine never come out right. I don't like doing square and a square, which I totally get. You could always take this and not do a square and a square, and you can do a six and a half inch center piece instead. Totally acceptable. It's your quilt. Don't ever feel like you can't change it to make it work for you. Okay, let me see if I can find a square ruler here, because that'll be easier to square this guy up. And we are looking for a six and a half inch square, and it's pretty close, just those little... Three and a quarter is going to be my center. So I'm just lining this up, taking my time. Making sure that's right in the center. Okay. I've got it centered all the way around. So I'm going to start with two sides. We're just cutting all these little, pretty much these little dog ears off and straightening the block out. And now I don't have to be so careful with the three and a quarter center. Just put it on the six and a half inch mark. Okay. All right, there we go. See, you can see I just have shreds that came off. So not a whole lot off, just a little. Okay, so there's my center. So I'm gonna set that guy aside for a minute. Let's put him over here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make our pieces that are going to frame out that center. So this is going to be the piece that goes on the left and right hand side for me. And then this is going to be that the piece yeah, left and right hand side. Is that how that will go? Sorry. Let me grab that center again. I dropped it on the floor. It'll kind of go like that. And then we're going to have a top and bottom piece that's going to be like this. So to get these pieces, in the instructions, they're telling you to do quarter square triangles. But I wanted red all the way around to kind of frame the center and then have these green sticking out. So I this is the part that I changed a little bit. So follow the instructions if you want it to look just like the instructions. These are called split square triangles because they're not quite quarter square triangles. There's two pieces here. And then if I had two pieces here, they would be quarter square. But I have one whole triangle here and two smaller pieces here. So this is called a split square. A half square triangle is most of you know, just the two pieces, which let me find that. You're gonna make these first. This is your half square triangle, okay? Now if you're doing the quarter square triangles like they did, with you're gonna take your two half square triangles and you're gonna lay them on top of each other pull up my paper here um and the colors are going to be opposite directions or, or opposite colors pretend this is another half square triangle and you're going to draw a line and you're going to sew on both sides of the line and cut them apart and you're going to get two quarter square triangles but if you're going to do a split square triangle which is what i'm doing you take your half square triangle and you take a solid square and i just cut these even though they didn't really need to be I cut these four and a half, just like you'd cut for the half square triangles. It's going to be a little bit big, but I'd ha rather have a little bit of waist and have it too small because the math would have come out to like three and seven eighths or four and a quarter. I think it, no, it's not three and seven eighths. I want to say it was like four and three eighths or something with eights. And I'm not an eights kind of girl. <laughs> if something has eights, I usually typically round it up if I can. 
So that's not my favorite thing to do is do a pattern with eighths. So to do a split square triangle instead of a quarter square triangle, it's the same process as a quarter square triangle, except you're using one solid square instead of two half square triangles. So I'm gonna draw a line across the background white and the green, just like you would if you're making the quarter square triangles. And I'm gonna sew on both sides of that line a quarter inch away. Again, just like you would for the quarter square triangles. So I'm doing this just a little bit differently because I wanted the red to frame out that center. Plus with split square triangles, you have one less seam to match up because if these were both half square triangles, you have to match those seams right in the center. So in a way, this is kind of a little bit easier. So I'm gonna cut that apart on that line that I drew. And ta-da! you can see the split square triangle. So now I need to press these and I'm gonna press them towards the red. And after they're pressed, I'm gonna trim these down. I believe they're three and a half inches square they need to be. And then I will join them together like that to make another one of my pieces that surround the center. So let me press these. And there's a little bit of waste because I did cut this larger than what it really needed to be this square, but it's not that much. As you can see, it overhangs the half square triangles just a little bit, but there's definitely calculators all over the internet. If you're somebody who, I know some people are really bothered by even just a little bit of waste and that's okay. If you're that kind of quilter, no problem whatsoever. You do you. Um, and if it does bother you, there is calculators like all over the internet. If you want it to be exactly precise, that can tell you, like, if you want to do a split square to cut these pieces, this, and that piece is that definitely do that. I would like to, I like to oversize them a little bit just in case my quarter inch is a little bit off and it's too big. That way I don't have to scrap the whole thing and start over. So that's just my way of thinking. Okay, so now I'm gonna trim these down to three and a half inches square. I need to find the center of the three and a half inch, which is one and three quarters. And some of these kind of little scraps, they're really good for like stuffing dog beds or cat beds if you make things for the Humane Society near you or things like that. So that's what these little pieces would be good for. Okay. Again, finding the center. I always take my time doing this. Rather take your time than do it quickly and then can't put fabric back on once you cut it. <laughs> I don't want to have to remake these guys. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to take these and sew them together and I showed you that I had one side to go with my center here. Okay. And I had this piece, which is going to be the top and the bottom. And I've got my other side done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two together. And I'm, then I'm going to attach the remaining background squares to these to look like this to get the top. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll put the whole block together. Let me close my rotary cutter so I don't injure myself. <laughs> So not a hard block, but this one's definitely more time consuming than the other block. And depending if you do quarter square triangles or split square, or how you do your center, you might choose to do a six and a half inch square in the center and not do the square in a square. Then that'll all change your timing too, so. And I do have some tone on tone background fabric, so I'm just making sure that I have the right side up. <laughs> the nice thing about having some bright lights in my sewing space is that you can hold a tone on tone into the light. And if it's a little bit shiny, not shiny like glitter, but a little bit, you can, if you move the fabric kind of like this, you can see the tone on tone. And if you look on the other side, it's just slightly duller. So that's a good way to check for tone on tone. And I've also heard and I've seen that a black light works, but it doesn't always work. It just depends on what the manufacturer used to do the tone on tone or the white on top, the white with, like what kind of material they used to print with. Sometimes it will show up and sometimes it won't. But I don't carry a black light around typically, <laughs> so um, I suppose I could get one. And I know you can get them in a little flashlight. So if that's something like if you work with tone on tones a lot and you can't figure out which side is which sometimes, that's a way to do it. So you get yourself like a little mini black light flashlight and shine it on there. And just giving this one a press. Okay, I'm gonna put this here. Now the centers of these don't have to really nest with anything, but you're right here where your center block, that's gonna nest with your top and bottom. So um, I press those out, so I'm gonna press this one in after I join these to it. So I'm going to join this and then we can put our whole block together. This is a pretty block. I really like this block. And I wasn't sure about changing to the split square triangles, but I'm really pleased that I did because I don't know what other color I would have chosen for there. I think the red is really going to frame out this center fabric that I've been, every week I've been trying to figure out how to use this fabric with words because I really like fabric with words. Um, wasn't sure quite how to use it. And then this block came along and I thought, well, if I cut it the right way, and why I'm saying I wasn't sure how to use it is because when there's a directional fabric like that, with my OCD that I have, I need it to go a certain way. And so lots of blocks we've done so far, I pulled this fabric out but I didn't think I would be able to get it to go a certain way. So I hadn't used it. And I thought, well, this is the perfect block for this. Now, this is another one of those, you don't want to lose your points. You can sew it from the back side and make sure that you sew one stitch over from where that these threads cross back here. Okay, so now I'm just going to press these in and then we can finish this block.
thanks to everyone who asked where I was and if I was still doing the sew along. I plan on continuing. This is block six, so we only really have three more left. Block seven, eight, and nine. There's ten blocks all together with the bonus block, but the bonus block is supposed to be like, it's called the autograph block, so you can put it on the back of your quilt with your label, which I've already labeled mine. I think I showed you guys that, but just in case. This is how I labeled mine with a sweet water, oops, upside down, sweet water label, and I really like the way it turned out. That label just seemed to work really perfectly with this fabric line. And I think it was actually one that I received last year. So glad I didn't get the date on it either. I can write the date in with a micron pen later. Okay, so now I'm just going to attach these. And then we'll be done with this block. Um, but we only have three more blocks left. So we are nearly done with this so long already. Like, I don't know where these last two months went. <laughs> It seemed to just flown by. I can't believe that it's almost November already and that we're going to start talking about Christmas soon. Speaking of Christmas, I will be having a, I will be doing Vlogmas right here on my channel, which if you don't know what Vlogmas is, because you're newer to YouTube or to a channel that does Vlogmas, Vlogmas is ba basically a challenge for YouTubers to make a video or video log, hence vlog miss, um, every day during the month of December. And I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be participating in that. And so are several other creators that are my friends. And so when we get there, I'll let you guys know who those people are. I'm going to be promoting them uh, because I like to support my friends. Um, and usually they, they're not going to be 30 minute long videos every day. You'll have some longer videos mixed in, but most days it's just going to be what I'm up to that day. Um, I have some advent calendars to open, so it'll be some of that. You'll see some of the advents I'm going to open. Um, and that's kind of it. And there'll be some, some sewing and stuff, but mostly opening my advent calendars. My quilting advent calendars. I got one from Cotton Cups. I got one from Sunny Path Fabrics on Etsy, which they do a very, very good advent box. And I'll link these down below if you're interested. I opened theirs last year because I like supporting small companies. And I'm back this year with theirs because it was so good. I wouldn't spend my money if it wasn't good. I also got one from GE Designs. Um, most, most of you know Gud Gudrun Erla. Um, I got one from her. And I also got the Missouri Star Quilting Countdown to Christmas box. So I've got quite a few advents to open. Now the Countdown to Christmas box, I won't be doing every single day. I'm actually going to be filming that with my friend Stephen Bland of Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter. Because we did it together last year. We opened the box together. And it was so much fun that we decided to do it again this year. So that will be a separate video. And what we usually do is we open like five days at a time or so. So we won't be peeking. We're not looking at any other uh, creator's channel if they're opening that one just because um, we want to be surprised. But that's going to be a lot of fun. We had a blast opening that together last year. So lots of fun stuff coming up soon. Now, this should be going up on Friday. So my normal live is Saturday at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Time. Um, and tomorrow on my channel, I'm going to be doing a little tutorial for a mini charm bag that needs, uh, one pack of mini charms, either some batting or soft and stable, a zipper that's either like about 12 inches or longer, and then a fat quarter. So if you're interested in making a little mini charm bag, that could be something that's fun as a little Christmas gift too. So check that out tomorrow. Okay, so, and that is Saturday the 21st. So here's this block all done. Oh my gosh, I love it. So as you can see, the red is framing out that center, which is the effect I wanted. So I'm super excited with how this turned out. And that's why I did those split square triangles as opposed to the quarter square triangles. So I hope that makes sense why I did that now. 
Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. Okay, I'm going to hang this on my wall and then we'll chat for a second. Thanks again for joining me today. That was a lot of fun. Um, I hope you understood the like method to my madness in my head with the split square triangles and all that. And I didn't confuse you more. Of course, you can always look at the instructions for the quarter square triangles. They're very similar to what I did. It just uses two half square triangles instead of the half square triangle and the full square. Um, but in, it'll turn out just as beautiful that way. But I hope you got the idea with why I did the red and wanted to frame out that block. And I really love it. So I'm really glad I did. Well, thank you so much to everybody who asked where I was and if I was still doing the blocks. I definitely am. We only have three more to go, which is really, really exciting. I'm so glad that we will have this done, whether you did it in Christmas colors or other colors, whether you're keeping these blocks to add to part two, which starts in January, or if you're just making a quilt out of these, which I'm making a quilt just out of the first 10. Um, I thought it would be a fun, quick little Christmas throw that I can have around my house. And then I'm going to start with a whole new collection in January. I was going to do Peachy Keen by Corey Yoder, but I've decided to use that fabric for something else. So I don't know yet what I'm going to do. Um, we'll see. There's a bunch of fun lines coming up for Moda coming soon. And as most of you know, I sell Moda fabric, so I always tap into Moda whenever I can. And of course, this is a Moda sew along, so of course I want to support them for giving us the free patterns by using their fabric. So, um, again, this Saturday we'll be making these cute little triangle pouches. This uses 25 two and a half inch squares, a fat quarter, um, and you'll need a zipper that's about 12 inches long or more. Um, doesn't have to be super long, but at least 12 inches long. And then you'll need some soft and stable to make it stand up like this or some batting if it's, a, if you don't mind it being a little more squishy. Um, but really cute, fun, quick and easy bag. This would be a great Christmas gift. For the sewer in your life, if they have a travel iron, I checked, my travel iron fits inside. There's no raw edges, it's bound on the inside, so it's a really cute, fun little bag. So that will be tomorrow on my channel, Saturdays with Steph, live at five. Um, you can head on over there, I will link where you can get the pattern and all the supplies that you need to make this cute little bag. All right guys, well, that's all I've got for today and I hope you had a great week. And now I'm caught up with Moda Blockheads. Yay! Now i got to get on Stitch Pink because I'm sewing Moda Stitch Pink as well and get caught up on that. It'll all come together. Going out of town really set you back for a little bit, but that's okay. I'm getting there. All right. Thanks so much, and I will see you soon. Bye!